Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a dramatic setting for the immortal Rimsky-Korsakov music of Scheherazade, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, charming Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Tonight, another charming musical play is brought to you, transcribed by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, you will hear the glorious music of Rimsky-Korsakov made into a light opera by Lawrence and Lee. Our story as old and as deathless as gray cliffs of the Hindu Kush. A story of danger and of love, in which I shall be Caliph of Samarkand, the most exalted and imperial monarch of the plains of Central Asia, the Sultan Shariar. And Dorothy Warrenshaw will be Scheherazade. And it came to pass in the 13th year of his reign that the most excellent Sharia, Prince of Samarkand, did proclaim throughout his dominions, yea, even unto the very borders thereof, a festival of 40 days and 40 nights. I command everyone to feast and to sing everywhere in all Samarkand. Let us sing for the king, we will sing for the king, we will sing for the king at the kingly command. Shari is a prince of pleasure. For me such a symphony For the ear to hear And the eye to see As the feeble can Of poor mortal men Never held in sweet memory Symbols flash for you Noble Sharia Fountains flash for you Mighty Sharia Bells are rung for you Songs are sung for you To ensure your royal delight All of feast is all the east is mine. Mountain height is yours, day and night is yours. Have the perfect joy of your call. Let the endless joy of your call. Abu Hassan. Come, Abu Hassan. Nay, continue your reverie, my friends. Enjoy yourselves. I merely called for my grand vizier, Abu Hassan. I am here, almighty Sharia, prince of the sun and light of the moon, ineffable lord of all the dominions. Yes, I know. Tell me, does the entertainment go well? 
Throughout your entire land, your people are celebrating. Joy is in every heart. Uh, only one thing troubles them, sire. Oh? They do not know exactly what they are celebrating. And we would inquire... Silence! Is it not enough that the Sultan of Samarkand commands it? True, your majesty. If I order a man's head chopped off, does anyone ask why? Never, your majesty. And if I order my subjects to be happy, who dares to question my imperial command? No one, O oh perfect one. Then I say, let happiness prevail. We, we are happy, sire. See how happy I am. <laughs> Nay, Hassan. I know that you are miserable because there is no woman in your house. I have two lovely daughters, Dona Zad and Jaherazad. But no wife. Alas for me, my bride has long been the guest of Allah in paradise. You ask why we celebrate Hassan. This festival honors my wife, my queen, Zobade. Tell me, Hassan, have you ever seen her equal? The olive perfection of her skin, her eyes like polished opals, and her form like the undulating sands of Coconor. Your majesty is indeed favored among men, for your wife, Zobide, is a queen among queens. My poor Hassan, how empty your life must be. We must find you a wife. I, I have searched the marketplace. Bah! Such creatures as my Zobide do not dwell among the carts and cabbages in the heat of the noonday sun. These frail creatures, Abu, are night-blooming flowers, and their fragrance must be sought by starlight in the untrodden ways. In the hush of the night there is love. There is love in the silent silver of the moonlight. For the night Murmuring at you Will I find her My lovely My own Must I spend Endless ages Wandering alone For the glare Of the day May fright her away, and the night is so dark that I can find my way. But I know she is waiting for me. for me. Majesty. Queen Zobede, where is she? I, I, I have not seen her. Bring her to the palace at once. Zobede, you summon it, Zobede. Zobede, 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 Zobede. Zobede, I'm summoning Zobede. You summon it, Zobede. You summon it, summon it, summon it, summon it, summon it, Zobede. Where is Queen Zobede? She is fled, Your Majesty. Fled? With Your Majesty's cousin, Shazanan. Fled with my cousin? Fled from my court? Fled, Your Majesty. He lies! Tell her his tongue! Oh, no, sire! Mercy! Mercy! 
This is true, Hassan. The queen is gone. Alas, it is true, O oh, perfect one. For months, Zobide has been plotting against you. I was not told. Why was I not told? Who would dare to speak out against the king's favorite? Call out the guard! Pursue them! They shall not escape! What is that? That music! That is the band of musicians which your majesty has ordered to play for this night's entertainment. Let the music cease! Let the instruments be smashed and the players thrown into the dungeon! Oh. The, the celebration is over! And I swear, as I am Sultan of Samarkand, what has happened this night shall not occur again. Never shall a wife be faithless to Sharia. Your Majesty forswears the company of women? Nay, by the beard of the Prophet, I shall wed every day if I choose. But on the wedding night, at the sounding of the twelfth stroke of midnight, each bride shall die. No. This is the oath of Sharia. May Allah be my witness. No queen of Samarkand shall live past the hour of midnight. Oh. Shari. Yes, O oh perfect one. Go fetch me a wife. A, a wife, your majesty? A wife. Who is that singing in the courtyard? Is, is, is someone singing? You are pale, Abu. Can it be a relative, perhaps? Well, it is difficult to say. A daughter, even. I... I fear it is my Scheherazade. You fear Hassan? O only because she might offend your majesty with her ugly face. A few moments ago, you called her lovely. Oh, a joke, oh, perfect one. Scheherazade has the ears of an owl, the face of a bat, the, the complexion of a decrepit crow. She has the voice of a nightingale. Her, her only grace. Go bring me this crow of yours, Abu Hassan. Perchance we shall transform her into a bird of paradise. In a moment, we shall return with Act Two of A Thousand and One Nights. Here is the second act of our Railroad Hour version of A Thousand and One Nights, starring Gordon MacRae as the Sultan Shariar and Dorothy Warren Show as the fabulous Scheherazade. burden of my years falls upon my white hairs like the rocks of an avalanche. Why are you sad, my father? Have you heard of the terrible oath of our Sultan Sharia? Oh, all Samarkand knows. And you know what must happen to his wives? Precisely at the hour of midnight. I know. Allah, why have you blessed me with a beautiful daughter? Share it out. Stick out your tongue. Uh, like this? Father, father... Try to touch the end of your nose. Can you cross your eyes? Uh, now, 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 scowl. Oh, it is no use. Nothing succeeds in making you ugly, Scheherazade. Oh, I would become an old woman overnight if it would make my father happy. Alas, Scheherazade, I fear you will never become an old woman at all. The king wants to marry you. <gasps> and when the marriage feast is over... When the sun has gone into the caverns underneath the earth, 
I will never see the light of my life again. Oh, do not despair, my father. Shariar has taken an oath by the prophet against all womankind. No bride shall live to see the dawn after her wedding day. And I swear that I shall live to see the glory of another sunrise. Which oath is stronger, the king's or mine? Allah shall decide. <laughs> The king is pleased with this bride. Is he? We know already the pleasantness of her voice. Does the court wish to hear a song from the new queen? Sing, my love. I do not wish to sing. The king commands you to sing. And the queen refuses to sing. You know my oath. You know how long you shall remain queen. I advise you to sing while there is still breath within you. Will a song spin out the hours of my breathing, Shariar? You dare to call me Shariar? That is your name, and I am your wife. I prefer to be called Oh, Perfect One. Oh, Pooh, you aren't perfect. You've spilled salad oil all over your tunic, and your turban's on crooked. No one dares speak thus to the king. You shall die. I shall die anyway. Enough! Clear the court. All of you, take your leave from the banquet hall. The marriage feast is ended. I beseech you, Your Majesty. Who is this child? It is my sister, Dajazad. Can you deny her the privilege of bidding me a last farewell, O oh, perfect one? Let it be brief. Shahrazad, my sister, I cannot sleep again until you tell me the ending of the story. Not now, little Dunyazad. But I must know how the story ends. Story? Story? What story? Did you not know, Almighty King, that my sister is gifted above all of Allah's creatures in the skill of telling tales, marvelous, mystical tales, which are almost beyond the power of believing? Oh, I must hear such a tale. Is there time? Well, his Majesty has pressing business at the hour of midnight. That business will be attended to, never fear. But until the stroke of twelve, you will entertain me with one of your marvelous adventures. As you command, O oh perfect one. Long ago, in a city known as Baghdad. Baghdad? Lived a fabulous pharaoh known as Sinbad. Sinbad? of his life of luxury and idleness in the city did fit out a vessel a hundred cubits long and one hundred and fifty cubits high. And Sinbad set his course for the farthest reaches of the ocean of the Indies where a great storm seized upon his sails and smote his ship upon a rock. And Sinbad deemed that his days had ceased to multiply themselves until a mighty eagle swept down out of the cloud, grasped Sinbad's collar in his claws, and soared with him across the angry waves. An eagle? Verily did the eagle snatch Sinbad from the jaws of the waves, else would my story be swiftly ended. Hear my story, my husband, the saga of Sinbad the Sailor. Do not fail. Hear the marvelous tale of the travels of Sinbad the Sailor. Oh, I dare not imagine the horror. That awaits me. And on the narrow 
strand of beach found Sinbad a bottle of glass, which shone with colors which even the rainbow dreams not of. And corked up within the bottle was a genie. A genie? A genie. Was it a good genie or a wicked genie? Ah, you must judge that for yourself, my husband. But a moment to midnight, the hour of the vow he has spoken strikes the hour. If he hears not the sounding of midnight, the vow will be broken. the face of the genie grow black as a thundercloud, and he leaped in one stride to the peak of a mountaintop, and seizing a thunderbolt in each hand, he readied himself to fling the dagger of lightning at poor Sinbad, who dropped to his knees and begged for mercy. What then? What happened then? Sinbad took the bottle of many hues in which he had found the genie imprisoned, and he himself crawled inside the glass, drawing the cork in after him. Genius. And then? Sinbad opened his mouth to pronounce the magic words which the genie dare not utter. But the sound of their syllables had escaped him. No. He could not remember the magic words. Well, go on. Continue. What happened then? seventh and last voyage of Sinbad the Sailor. Stay. What do I see in the east? It is the glow of sunrise, O oh perfect one. Allah, preserve me. I have broken my vow. Nay, my husband. I swore you should die at midnight, but I heard not the striking of the hour. Your tale of Sinbad has bewitched me. Allah has cast this spell upon you, Shariar, to preserve you from your own wickedness. And it is a spell of love. Is it love truly? Or have you made Sharia the captive of your tongue? I am the captive, O Sultan, for I thought to build a bridge of words between us to span the sunset to sunrise. But Allah has built instead a bridge between our hearts. It has been a magical night. Mm, But only one night. I decree... There shall be a thousand more, a thousand and one nights of such fabulous tales. If you seek for it, the darkness has more to give you, Sharia. In the heart of the night, there is love. There is love. deepest thanks to lovely Dorothy Warrenshaw, Jay Novello, Mary Lee Robb, and to our entire company. 
Music for A Thousand and One Nights was by Rimsky Korsakoff. Lyrics and libretto by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Everyone who has had business experience knows how important it is to keep a careful check on income and expenses. But consider the complexities of record-keeping on just one railroad operating in many communities and employing thousands of men. Yes, railroad record-keeping is a big and important job. But the accuracy and care with which reports are made under the prescribed procedures of the Interstate Commerce Commission and subject to its supervision and scrutiny ensure the availability of accurate, impartial railroad information, a vital tool in the railroad's continuous efforts to produce better and better transportation service. Friends, we have an exciting schedule of musical premieres planned for the weeks to come on the Railroad Hour. Next Monday night, you will hear Guy de Maupassant's sparkling story of the necklace, given a new musical setting with the melodies of César Franck. And on July 21st, a new musical play which is rich with the waltz beat of Vienna, Love Song. Dorothy Warren Show joins Gordon McRae each Monday night at this time when the Railroad Hour brings you music you love combined with stories you will remember. Unfortunately, we were unable to present Lucille Norman in Starlight as originally scheduled for tonight. Miss Norman will appear on the Railroad Hour at a later date. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so, until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Hour was transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Make this station your convention headquarters. Attend the Republican convention on NBC.